So we have a basic set of characters and our, our premise more or less set up. Oh yeah, and they, someone's gonna die, right? Although that might have a, a double meaning. <laughs> it's one of those things where they die because they cast a, a side, a part of themselves and start fresh. The death card in tarot doesn't mean death, it means change, right? Or maybe someone will actually just die. Either way, I can just feel this is going to be huge. This is going to be a turning point for the, the show. It's going to give birth, right? And Q exposition. <laughs> there it is. Ah, so the lower the grade, the higher the power. Is he really? Or is a test. Given confidence in them. Gee, I wonder why there's so few of them. Why do I feel like running is not on the table this episode or this arc? Tadashi's in a lot of danger, I'm afraid. That's all. I needed to see. Hey, that felt good. That's one of the nice things about anime. That's sort of an escape from real life. A lot of times in crews like this, everyone has varying dispositions and motivations and surface behaviors, but typically, if the crew's any good, they all sort of show up when it counts, you know? Demon Slayer was a great example of that, having someone like, you know, Zenitsu, who is openly very upset about the whole thing, but you know you can count on when you need him. In real life, there are sometimes just people who just don't want to be there, you know? And you gotta work around them. I'm trying to think of an example of that in anime, but I can't off the top of my head. Episode 4, Cursed Womb. Must die. It's curseful. This guy looks like he might be a closet badass. I wonder how much we'll get to see of him. And this is how they keep things a secret. That explains a lot. Don't pet the curse dog. <laughs> or pet the curse dog. I see. It's sort of Silent Hill esque. It transforms the, the environment. Come to think of it, there might be a, a couple of Silent Hill elements, considering that what you see, or the curses manifest in physical form based on what people's fears are in life. <laughs> Chris Dog's having a great life, if you can call it that. Oh no. I thought they were going to rescue him, I also thought he would be younger. Yeah. Oh no, they're fighting amongst themselves. Uh, and that only scratches the surface of the, the complexities of these kinds of decisions. I could be wrong, but I'm not sure he was committed to saving him in the first episode. It just sort of worked out that way. I don't think that was his highest priority. It's tempting to think that the guy's tragic history makes it okay to not do what feels right, but I think his motivation was more for the mother. This is unsurprisingly a really classic dilemma that plays out in basically all these shows, where there's a conflict between idealism and pragmatism, I guess we can call it. Neither of them are acceptable on their own, because pragmatism without idealism is most likely cruel and descends into evil really quickly. Idealism without pragmatism just means losing all the time, and so your idealism didn't do much good anyway. And I think that's one of the hallmarks of a, of a good protagonist or a hero is that they don't compromise on their ideals, but they also have the personal responsibility to rise to the challenge so that they can affect things pragmatically at the same time. To Goro's point, it would be terrible if there was a negative consequence of securing this body. The danger scenario he listed of what if you save someone and they go on to do bad things is less relevant to me than what if by saving or securing this body, we die and the mission fails. But he's not wrong in his concern, and it is true that Yuji is a, a total rookie. He doesn't know anything about this world yet. Yeah, it's not really the time either way. Right. We gotta whoop. Oh, oh my god, what the hell? Oh no! We should have petted him more. A lot more. Oh hi. I honestly, I can't imagine the fear. Oh, that. What? What in the. Okay, but he has a curse. He can regenerate? That's a feature we're going to discover in this episode, right? I don't think you have enough nails. I always got to remind myself how horrifying it would actually be to find myself in these situations. I ran into a tiny brown bear in the woods once while rafting and I <laughs> totally lost it. And that was broad daylight with a group of people. Can't imagine being in this Silent Hill world and coming face to face with these demons. Curses, I'm sorry. 
Birds. Well, that was awesome. Okay, it's Voldemort. He's having a great time. <laughs> okay, this is a, a, happening at a different time. That's what I said. The designs of these teams are really, really interesting. <laughs> I don't know what he can possibly do without using his first powers. He's definitely regenerating, or else he's dead. There's something really familiar about this design, too. I'm trying to place it. With one hand! Ah! I'm trying to learn about Chris' energy in a moment like this. There's just no way. There's no way. There's no way. No, no, no. There's no time for that now. He did. He did, and he's here. Yeah, he's trying to escape a little bit. He's not going to though. <laughs> That's interesting. He's asking a lot of himself right now. Damn, he's got a whole zoo! I think it's a cross between Pan's Labyrinth and the last boss of Parasite Eve. Oh no, his arms. Without knowing the full trajectory of the show, I feel like this scene is important for a whole bunch of reasons. One, he's been sort of cavalier about this whole thing so far. His curse is power, you know, dark energy that could be used for good, but he's nowhere near ready for that. And part of that comes from his lack of understanding, like it's just the beginning of his journey. The curse he has, by definition, is something like using darkness, things that are not in line with his own values, for a result, you know, for, for winning. And that's going to be a tempting thing because he offers so much power. A fully developed Yuji will be able to take that power, understand it, understand the depths of darkness in himself, and be able to master it and use it so that he's really, really effective and powerful in the world without being evil. But he's so innocent at this point. He's been so gung-ho and sort of cheery-eyed about the whole thing. This is a, a much-needed wake-up call in terms of the stakes. You know, just not minutes ago he was talking about securing a body as his number one priority, and, and now he's facing death. So, yeah, the stakes are real. And also, I think, very critically, it's a test of his ideology, and his heart, and his ability to do the right thing, and the difficult thing, when it's called for. And I feel like it's a useful reflection, you know, when things are all falling apart. It can be so overwhelming that I think the instinct a lot of the time is to capitulate to it, but I think there are opportunities in those moments that are that are heroic, which means overlooking how dire things are, or more like accepting how dire things are, and then Tanjiro-style focusing on what would be the best thing you could do in that moment. It's sort of obvious to watch it, but it's not so obvious when lived, because there are often really grand, bold things that could be done, even if it's, you know, to try to take a different emotional outlook on things, or to not react in a, in a manner in line with one's pre-existing habits in those situations, but to try to reach for one step better, you know, it's really difficult, which is why I think these moments of not capitulating and digging deep and putting the moment and the good choice front and center is so satisfying to watch on screen. Alright, he did say that, but he's bringing something new to the game. Uses his power. Right. But that's not sustainable long term. Yeah, it's a, it's a danger for his character. But. <laughs> oh, whoops. You don't have enough hatred. Is it a sign? Yeah, they got out. So now he can let everything go. <laughs> Even the curses. Alarms. And a shoulder pad! We got a cursed shoulder pad! This might be a first. There's that regeneration. Uh, that, yeah, that makes no, makes no sense. That decision. But it gets, gives us a chance to show off his power. With a choke slam. <laughs> he takes great satisfaction in his power. That was a great touch having him end up sitting there calmly. There are a lot of doors this opens. The fact that it can change the environments too. 
Thanks for your help. Can you just wait patiently like this? Right, he would be a responsibility. That's what he was talking about. Right, he had his own guilt wrapped up in that comment about, like, what if they go on to do bad things? Yes, like power exposition. Domain expansion? Manifest your destiny? Speaking of changing environments. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's a piece of him. Did they maybe have an agenda by coming here? Does someone know about that? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what happened? Is he too weak to come back? Or is there a reason he's waiting? Maybe to be able to get out of this crazy manifest domain we've created? Hey, hey. If I do recreate this, how am I going to do that backflip? <laughs> Didn't really think that through. And Juju, Juju Stroll. It's just ingrained into his being, the politeness. Don't sleep on this guy, though. Don't sleep on this guy. I feel like he's going to be super important. Thank you for that Taisho fact. <laughs> That's me. I do that, too. I can't sit still when I'm on the phone. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's not, it's not the way. These are kind of cute in their slice of lifeness. So about the episode and the choice, the more I watch those like this, the more real this kind of thing becomes to me. I mean, it's been in front of me my whole life. And on some level, I've, I've, I've always been aware. You know, I've been aware since Star Wars of the light side of the force and the dark side of the force. But the older I get and the more I experience, the more it becomes poignant to me just how powerful the dark side can be and how much energy is actually there. And not only that, but the fact that it's not necessarily a terrible thing. It only depends on what you do with it. But that's sort of the danger because you're playing with fire. I think in order to really understand it, tied up in the conversation has to be an understanding of what true desire is and the depths that that can pull you into. You know, I mean, just imagine the thing you've wanted the most. And I don't mean wanted on a conceptual level. I mean that, the, you know, something that causes you an intense agony not to have or a situation where you would do anything and you're just so desperate to resolve it or to get what you want. It, it's literally a matter of life or death or it feels that way to you. I have felt that way before in relationships where love was concerned. That kind of primal energy, things like jealousy, fear, and pain of loss and things like that. And I've felt it in areas where I've been betrayed and people solidly managed to defeat me simultaneously, leaving me beaten and sort of questioning my own values. And in those moments, there's this incredible chaotic energy that can be pulled upon. And in most cases, by default, you're not in control of those things. You didn't choose to have them. You couldn't dispense with them if you wanted to because you haven't grappled with it enough or you haven't understood it enough. Or part of the fact that the dark energy exists at all means that there's something that happened that uncovered a lie, a lie that exposes something you've been counting on for your identity or just something else that is fundamental in your own concept of self. And you can go all the way into those emotions. You can surrender to them and let them have control over you. And in many cases, you can win. You know, you can get revenge. You can reduce yourself to the same tactics as people who are wronging you and pull something out that way. But every time you make that decision, you have added one battle's victory to yourself, but you've made yourself weaker and you have reduced the tools that you have to make healthy decisions going forward. Because now you've trained yourself to capitulate to your worst instincts rather than find a way to understand them, to decide from a more central and balanced place what actually would be the best thing for you. And then to use that energy, if you can, towards that goal. In all honesty, I don't think many people can, one, be aware of that struggle, and two, master that struggle to the point where there's nothing that threatens you in that way, or that you have sufficient power from things that are not destructive. That's a rare sort of high that I think makes hero so admirable and so compelling. It's like, how could I possibly hope to be at that level? And so in this case, he does the obvious thing and, you know, maybe the best thing of turning to his cursed power in order to not die and to save his friends. And that sort of kicks the can down the road to another day. You know, there's the assumption that, well, next time I'll get a handle on it or eventually I'll get a handle on it. But his cursed form will also get stronger with each passing encounter and with each finger eaten. And so there's this question of like, well, where does it stop? How do you get out of it while you are simultaneously feeding it? Speaking of the constant challenge between pragmatism and ideals, this is where that battle takes place on an individual front. That war also exists internally. And I'm actually not against it. You know, I feel like there are some ways where I've given into darker things in my life that helped me get just enough of a footing, just enough of a solid footing where I wasn't drowning or didn't feel like I was drowning. Had a sufficient amount of confidence in my own ability and power and capability of getting what I wanted that I could ease up a little bit, you know, that it didn't become so life or death. And I could kind of take something like comfort in the fact that I was capable of doing things like that, even if the things I had done brought me some kind of guilt. You know, it's always a mixed bag. And then kind of put that to rest a little bit and have that not be such a driving force. So the more I watch, the more I feel like Yuji's journey is going to be a really, really compelling one.